Hello, I am Dr. Shujay Dasgupta from Kolkata. I am consultant in reproductive medicine in Genome Fertility Center Kolkata and infertility and IVF specialist. Today I am going to discuss what a gynecologist should do when he or she is dealing with male infertility. Because we often feel that we the gynecologist are feeling shaky while dealing with a male infertility. So the treatment and investigation of male infertility starts with semen analysis. Please remember to do semen analysis from authentic laboratory that is the laboratory who is following the WHO 2010 guidelines because sometimes we get to see semen analysis from some laboratories where it has been seen that the total sperm count is 25 million per ml but the impression is written as abnormal or oligospermia which is not true. So ideally semen analysis should be done from andrology lab or any other authentic lab. Now the problems. First one is mild male factor problems. What will you do? The actual treatment depends on other factors as well like the wife's age, the duration of infertility, the condition of fallopian tubes and the ovaries. But in this case usually no further investigation for male partner is needed if it is simply mild male factor. You can advise lifestyle changes like avoiding heat exposure to scrotum, like avoiding tight undergarments, avoiding prolonged sitting, prolonged biking, etc. Another important thing often we ignore is treatment of chronic fungal scrotal dermatitis because it's a reversible uh, cause of male factor, uh, male factor infertility. And you can give antioxidants here, but remember to repeat the test at least after 3 months because it's expected that you can see some changes only after 3 months of time and accordingly you can take the decision. Now the second condition is severe male factor problem, what will you do? In this case you can give antioxidant but please remember don't rely on antioxidants in severe male factor infertility excessively because it has been seen that 25% of the male who are having severe male factor problem that is severe problem in sperm count or motility can land up in azospermia over the period of 6 to 12 months if not treated properly. So you should start investigation and treatment as quickly as possible. Now again in this case what will you do IUI or ICSI depends on other factors like condition of the wife, uh, the fallopian tubes and ovarian reserve, the duration of infertility, wife's age etc. But if the man cannot afford IUI or ICSI right at this stage, he can tell you that okay I will do it after 6 months or 12 months, you can offer him semen freezing because there is good chance that he may land up in azospermia when he will think that he should go for treatment. So this is very important thing. Another important thing is that please don't advise donor sperm indiscriminately to each and every couple with male factor fertility because there is medical legal implications because you have to give all the possible options and patients has the right to decide their best option according to, to financial capability and other factors. So you should not offer only the donor sperm, you should give them other options because they have the right to become the biological parents and also if you offer only the donor sperm, if, if you don't offer ICSI or other treatments by which they can become the biological parents, you are basically violating the patient's basic autonomy. Now investigation for CVL male factor. It starts with physical examination. Often the gynecologists are feeling uncomfortable in examining the male partner. If you feel uncomfortable, you should refer uh, the patient to appropriate person. Why physical examination is important? Because you can diagnose some serious conditions like testicular cancer. And it has been shown that semen abnormality may be the first sign of testicular cancer. Secondly, the examination of secondary sex characters, particularly the, uh, the testicular size and consistency are important because you can get to whether you are dealing with some obstructive pathology or non-obstructive pathology that is testicular failure or not. And you can diagnose varicocele clinically. Remember, to diagnose varicocele, you should not advise ultrasound. Why? Ultrasound finding of varicocele is not the indication for varicocele surgery. Varicocele surgery should only be advised if there is clinical varicocele that is palpable or visible. At the same time, there is discrepancy on testicular size that is testis is small on the size on which the varicocele is there and there is problem in the cement count and 
there is good chance that the couple can conceive naturally that is there is no female factor fertility so in this case only varicocele surgery should be advised otherwise routine varicocele surgery in ultrasound detection uh, detected varicocele will do more harm than good now the further investigation again depends on semen analysis you have to see the ph and the volume if the ph and the volume are low then basically you are dealing with obstructive pathology in that case you should advise some imaging like scrotal ultrasound or in some cases truss rectal ultrasound that is truss and if you find that on the both sides you cannot palpate the first difference you should suspect cystic fibrosis so the cystic fibrosis carrier uh, detection should uh, should be done by genetic testing pcr in both the partners although it is not very common in india but it can sometimes happen on the other hand if you find that in semen the ph and volume are normal you are likely dealing with some non obstructive pathology so you should start with hormonal evaluation like fsh lh testosterone and of course the blood sugar because sometimes we have seen men who did not have any other medical conditions but when we have advised uh, the blood sugar testing we have diagnosed the diabetes so diabetes can be uh, uh, diagnosed only when you are evaluating the male factor infertility problem so if you find fsh lh low testosterone low you are dealing with hypogonadotropic hypogonadism it's a very uh, the the prognosis is very good because the response is often dramatic with gonadotropin treatment but sometimes you may require pituitary imaging in consultation with endocrinologist if you are uh, dealing with testicular failure that is low testosterone along with high fsh in that case genetic testing should be done karyotyping and only karyotyping is not enough you should also do y chromosome microdeletion particularly if you are planning for testicular sperm aspiration because there are some particular type of y chromosome microdeletion like azf a and azf b deletion where testicular sperm aspiration is not advisable and again please remember we sometimes make a mistake that when we see that testosterone is low we supplement testosterone this is a gross mistake because if a man is planning to become father and testosterone is low supplementing testosterone exogenously will further suppress his spermatogenesis so what you can do you can simply check her check his blood for estrogen see the testosterone is to estradiol ratio if it is less than 10 you can advise alnastrozole or letrozole as aromatase inhibitor and the uh, evidence is there uh, uh, evidences are showing that letrozole can improve if you give it 2.5 mg per day uh, uh, for 3 months it can significantly improve the seminal parameters now what's the actual treatment you have to see the total motile count that is tmc which is more important than count and motility alone if the total motile count is more than 5 million per ml you can do iui provided that the fallopian tubes are okay if the total motile count is less than 5 million per ml ideally you should offer ICSI but if you think that ICSI is not required at this stage and the man also wants to do IUI in that case you can do something called trial IUI that is you do IUI you see the post wash sperm condition if the inseminating motile sperm count that is post wash motile sperm count is more than 1 million per ml you can do further 3 to 4 cycles of IUI if the inseminating motile sperm count is less than 1 million per ml then you should not do IUI further you should offer ICSI and in this case if you find that the first sample is not very good the sperm concentration or motility is extremely bad you can request the man if possible try to give second sample because it has been found that the double ejaculate often improves the sperm quality now coming to azospermia remember azospermia is treatable azospermia is not the condition of uh, uh, is not not uh, uh, always azospermia does not mean that you have to uh, provide donor sperm he has the right to become biological father using his own sperm by surgical sperm retrieval that is tc or tesa these are very simple techniques it does not need very great skill it's very simple techniques but please don't advise fnac because in fnac you cannot freeze the sperm in fnac you don't know whether the sperms are motile or not and fnac report will take at least two to three weeks time to come so what you can do 
you do diagnostic tessa or trial tessa where you put needle inside the testicles and see whether the sperms are there and within few minutes the embryologist will tell you whether sperms are there they are motile or not and from which segment of the testicle you are finding the sperms and if you cannot find the sperm in the same setting you can do tc that is testicular sperm extraction that is you can cut make small cut in the testicles and send it uh, to the embryologist who is sitting in, uh, in the side room and he will immediately tell you the diagnosis and the sperm quality and at the same time you have the option to freeze the sperm so that the couple can undergo IVF later on using this frozen sperm and remember even in the man with chromosomal abnormality Kleinefelter syndrome or uh, some other genetic problems you should not refuse TESA because even in that case you can avoid transmission of this genetic syndrome from father to son by simple techniques like sperm fish that is sperm aneuploidy testing or some expensive testing like PGTA that is pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy and it has been found that even in Sartori only cell syndrome there is 30 to 40 percent chance that you can get the sperm from other areas of the testicles. Now the last problem is ejaculation problem which can sometimes happen we sometimes get to see this type of problem when we are dealing with male infertility the usual reasons are diabetes some neurological disorders like spinal cord injury or some obstruction in the outflow tract so you have to investigate to find out the cause you have to rule out retrograde ejaculation by advising post masturbation urine testing if you find the sperms in post masturbation urine you you can do IUI or IVF ICSI depending on the sperm concentration and motility but it's important to alkalinize the urine before going for these procedures and if you cannot get sperms even in urine then of course you have the option of doing TESA or testicular sperm aspiration so dear friends ladies and gentlemen in a nutshell male infertility can be treated antioxidants are helpful in mild cases in severe cases don't depend on antioxidants you can advise antioxidants in severe cases but please don't delay investigation and treatment because the man can land up in azospermia and remember even in case of azospermia donor sperm is not the only solution you have to give the patient other options that is the ICSI, TESA and so and it has been shown that if uh, the majority of the men even those with genetic syndrome can become biological fathers using their own sperm by assisted reproductive techniques. Thank you very much. For more videos, download the Omnicurus app.